Hi folks, we're coming to near the end of our study now and uh, concerning um, the battle in gospel ministry. So let's come before the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this day. And Lord, this final part of the series, we pray that you would anoint it. Lord, we pray that it would be for all your glory and honor. We pray that you be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're coming to praying in the spirit. I said there's prayer and there's prayer. There's prayer in the carnal way, but then there's prayer in the spiritual way, and that is to depend on the Holy Spirit. Now, we need to be praying for each other. So if you turn to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 25, it says, Brethren, pray for us. So Paul's asking for prayer, and we need to be praying for each other. Prayer in a crisis, Acts chapter 4, 29. Acts 4, 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. By stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and that they spoke the word of God with boldness. So prayer is powerful. God will answer your prayers and release his power and his resources in your ministry, especially in a crisis. Ephesians, uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 so you know spend time in prayer for your ministry and for, for the people involved in your ministry Philippians 4 verse 6 be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God so don't be worried in your ministry Bring your concerns before God and he will answer. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7. And we're near the end of our... I've enjoyed it today and I hope you find it a blessing. And it's just been good to be reminded of these things. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7. But the end of these things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. So, in a sense, you know, as servants of God, we can't be glib. We can't be frivolous. It's a serious business. You know, I think that uh, these people who are very, very somber and very, very serious, I, I don't think that's in the Word of God. But it, I think that we need to be sober and realize that as servants of God we've been given an awesome responsibility people are going to hell they are being lost and it's important that we take the work seriously and be really praying for people that God would work in their lives and praying for help from God to do that and uh, you can turn to Matthew chapter 26 36 to 45 to to um, to finish the study. If we go to Ephesians six fourteen, we come to the end now. Sorry. Ephesians six fourteen, we read: Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Um, righteousness there I think is in terms of the imputed righteousness of Christ it's being covered with Christ's righteousness to realize that if you fail if you make mistakes you're covered in the righteousness of Christ Christ is your covering so you know you can if you confess your sin and acknowledge you're a sinner and acknowledge your failure and come to Jesus Christ he will cover you with his righteousness and you can still come into the presence of the Father. So don't feel that you're so unworthy that you can't come before the presence of God. And Satan 
is going to try and get you down and think that you're not worthy to be a gospel servant okay so long as you repent and trust in Christ and look to his righteousness then you'll be okay okay and to walk in righteousness and holiness as well okay so we've basically um, come to the end really and I'm just going to finish off with a couple of scriptures and a few thoughts we turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6 12 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses fight the good fight of faith okay don't give up as a servant of God don't 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 lay down your arms fight the good fight come on you've been called to a great calling don't give up now 2 Timothy 4 7 I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith may that be said of you you want to see something really good go and watch the funeral on I'll be honest dot com of Bob Jennings. Bob Jennings died a few months ago. But if you type into uh, albionist.com on the YouTube and then have a look on the on the YouTube channel for the funeral of Bob Jennings and look at his life, how he fought the good fight even to the end when he had cancer. Jude chapter 3 turn to Jude sorry Jude chapter 3 uh, sorry Jude verse 3 beloved while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints my dear brothers and sisters in Christ to the pastors who are the brothers <laughs> You've been called to a great calling to, to pastor your people to preach the word of God. You mustn't give up. You must realize what a great privilege you've got and realize that God will meet you uh, in, in, in your need as a pastor. But realize that you must fight with God's weapons. And realize where the battle really lies. It lies with you getting on your knees and praying against the satanic forces and being built on the word of God and in the resources that God has given you through his word and you need to teach your people that but all of us whether we're pastors or not we're all involved in gospel ministry whether we're Sunday school teachers, youth workers you know um, whatever ministry it is whether it be a help ministry practical ministry, a caring ministry we're all involved in gospel ministry in some way it's all valuable, it's all important Caring for people and being loving to people is, is, is absolutely vital and part of preaching the gospel as we preach with our lives. But we're in a battle as we do that. We've got to realise that we're in a battle. We must not underestimate the enemy. And we must put the whole armour on and the resources God has given us. One writer said, no battle of any importance can be won without enthusiasm Napoleon Bonaparte said victory belongs to the most persevering you've got to persevere Winston Churchill said never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy we just want to pray now and close this study I'll just be quiet and I'll play this song And then I'll pray. As this song plays, just be quiet and remember all the things that God has said to us through His Word, these eight studies. And then I'll close in prayer.
Father God, we've learned a lot of things in these studies. We confess that we have not been faithful as we should. And we confess all our sin and failure. But Father God, we thank you that you don't leave us or forsake us. I pray for all of us today, for every pastor and preacher and all of us, your children, the things that we've learned through these studies. I pray that we would grow through them. I pray that we'd be united in you. I pray that we'd be empowered for service. So Father, I ask these things in your name and for your glory. May your Holy Spirit defend your truth, build us up, and empower and equip us. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one, be with you all. And with us all. Amen. God bless you. And I hope that was a blessing to you. Take care now. And God bless.